Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Today, I'm gonna to be building a 16 terabyte free NAS. This is my first time ever building a free NAS for myself, so uh, this should be interesting. So today, I'm gonna to be finally building my first ever free NAS. This is a project I've been planning on doing for well over a year, and the necessity for a free NAS right now is quite critical. And I just need a more elegant solution compared to using external drives over and over again. So today's the day, and we're gonna finally get this project underway. So to go through the parts, we've got the brand new Ryzen 5 5600G. It's a six core 12 pred processor. Generally speaking, this system isn't gonna be under much of a load, so this should do just fine. But the benefit of going with the 5600G is that it has an iGPU already, meaning that we can get away without having to add a discrete GPU. Now, there is a slight downside to going with a Ryzen APU, as that does mean that we are limited to non-ECC memory, which ECC memory is quite highly recommended when it comes to a free NAS if you're concerned with data integrity. But this is my first time, and also a lot of this is gonna have multiple backups if I did have any uh, critical system errors. So for now, I can go without ECC, and maybe that'll be something I consider further down the line if I change anything out. Which is why I've gone with 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200 speed memory. Now, with going ZFS, it is generally recommended to have one gigabyte of memory per terabyte of storage. Which is why, for the 16 gigabytes of memory, we do have four four terabytes WD RAID drives. So 16 terabytes should cover me for quite some time, with the possibility of expansion further down the line. Now for our boot drive, we don't need too much to store our free NAS, and uh, I managed to pick up a WD Blue SN550 250 gig drive. It is NVMe, which really isn't going to be too much of a benefit with this kind of system, but I managed to get this drive for about £30, which is a pretty good value for a 250 gig SSD. All of this will be going in the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max 2. Now, you may be wondering why I'm pairing a Ryzen 5000 series CPU with a B450 motherboard. Surely I'd be missing out on some of the features that Ryzen 5000 series offers, like PCIe Gen 4. Well, the Ryzen 5000 series APUs only support PCIe Gen 3, so if I want to go B550, there wouldn't be too much benefit, especially when a free NAS wouldn't demand much of it. And also, the other reason why I went with this B450 board is because it was really cheap. This B450 board was on sale for £60, which I think is an absolute steal for a platform which is still viable today. So it'll do the job just fine and it can also accommodate all of the storage devices that we have. Now, I also reached out to Noctua for this project as I wanted to use the Noctua NHP1 passive cooler for this system. It just seemed like the perfect use for it as it's not designed to take on very demanding CPU workloads and that seems to describe FreeNAS to a T, so I thought it'd be perfect use for this, and uh, I'm quite excited to see how it performs in this system. But not to have helped out with some additional cooling for this system with a couple of NFA12 120mm fans. Additionally, powering the system, we've got a Corsair TX650M, which is a semi-modular power supply with an 80 plus gold certified rating. It's a decent all-round power supply, it's not top of the tier list, but it's still a really reliable unit. And finally, all of this will be going in the Fractal Design Divine R6, the reason why I went with this case is because it's got such a huge potential for storage. Also, I'm quite a big fan of fractal design and I do quite like the sleek design of the case. So with all that out of the way, let's get cracking on with uh, building this free NAS. Okay, so we've got the uh, motherboard prepped and installed in the case, along with our three intake fans at the front. I'm gonna hold off on putting the exhaust fans in because I'm gonna do one in the rear and one at the top, but it may be a little bit tricky to install the NHP one with those fans in the way. So I'll install those after I've put the cooler on. We've also got our front panel connectors connected with the exception of our HD audio because 
I never use HD audio and for a free NAS it is not a concern so this isn't going to get plugged in. But we've got our actual front panel connectors for the uh, power and reset switches on, we've got a USB 2 connector plugged in, a USB 3 connector and then we've also plugged in the uh, intake fans. So next up I'm going to install the power supply because that 8 pin at the top might be a little bit tricky once we've got the cooler on so we'll get the bulk of the connections out the way and then move on to installing our NHP1. So we've got the NHP1 installed now and I've also mounted the exhausts for the case and as you can see I wasn't actually able to fit a regular NFA1225 in the top for exhaust. There was actually not enough space with that and the NHP1 but I found a slimmer NFA1215 which actually does fit and there is enough clearance between that and the NHP1. So it should help, even though this is a passive cooler, it should help dissipate heat out of the case a bit better up the top and out the back. So. Yeah, pretty pleased with that. So the only thing left to do really is uh, get our 16 terabytes of storage installed and then we're done. So, that's the build complete. I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. I know I'm going to be installing FreeNAS, but before I do, I've just jumped into a quick Windows install just to check our temperatures with the 5600G. And at the moment, like I said, with FreeNAS it's not too much of an intensive workload for a CPU, but the idle temperatures are looking perfectly fine with the NHP1. And that was tested with the side panel back on as well. So, I've also taken a look and all four of our 4TB WD Reds are showing up, so that's a good sign. And yeah, so the only thing left for me to do now is going to be installing FreeNAS, which I won't cover in this video or in a tutorial because like I said, I've never built a FreeNAS before, so uh, I'm probably not the best person to advise on how to actually install it. So I'll have to discover that for myself. But I will revisit this system in a later video just to show uh, how the actual system setup went and also how well it's working. There's only one last thing we need to do just to finish off the build entirely. So there we have it, the 16 terabyte free NAS. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear what you think about this system. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you. I'll see you next time.